to the second presentation of Plant Talk Creates. Uh, those of you who attended the first session saw me deliver an inaugural speech and I received some compliments. It was very nice. I can assure you that there is no more where it came from. <laughs> I just quickly give you Brian and Mel Dunphy to talk about IT. <laughs> Uh, welcome, victims. Um, <laughs> uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how Aikido works, where it's come from, uh, I guess what makes it different from other martial arts. The big thing, uh, since we want to talk about our life in Aikido, we want to talk about how we have used Aikido principles in our everyday life, right? Not just, just in the dojo, not just in terms of martial practice, but in terms of everyday use. Uh, so we'll get started with a bit of a brief history, do a little bit of demonstration, and we'll see how it goes in there. Uh, so Aikido is started by this guy, Yuichi Morihai. He was the founder of Aikido, which was largely developed in the 1920s, and so it's a bit of a more of a modern martial art in comparison to some other ones. This one was largely adapted from a couple of different styles, the main one being Daikuru Aikido, which was a much harder, I guess I would say closer to judo in terms of its application. Um, I will show you some demonstrations here today when we will talk about some of the differences. Some of the techniques that we do in our, in our practice require throws. In uh, Aikido Jiu Jitsu, it would be more of a, a back break. So rather than just drop a person here, it would be straight down the knee. And so Aikido tries to remove a lot of the more violent applications from martial arts. Uh, and so this is probably one of the kind of primary differences between Aikido and most other martial arts is, is the attempt to control or defuse your attacker without necessarily having to hurt them, be able to control them without having to injure them. Uh, so he started in this kind of harder style, then soon developed with, he got so good at the style that he discovered that he could do many of these techniques without actually having to hurt anybody, without having to, to break limbs or without having to kind of crush their skull into the ground and things like that. And so he kind of made it softer as he went along. Uh, and so that's where the terms Aikido come from. I mean, so well, there's a couple of translation issues, right? So there's some connotations. Uh, usually harmony or balance is what I is. So sometimes when we square off against each other, we go into what's called a balance stance, I happy. Uh, and so that means we do this kind of mirror stance, I will be in right stance, Melissa will be in right stance across from me, and there's this wonderful balance that kind of occurs here. Chi, which is, well, you've probably heard of Chi before, or Chi, uh, which can translate in a couple of different ways, but most people would say either spirit or uh, um, energy. And then Do, which is applied to a lot of martial arts, either path or way up. And so Aikido becomes the way of the harmonious spirit. Uh, and so that's what we're going to demonstrate today. Uh, now, Aikido has splintered over the years, and, and a lot of this had to do with uh, students who followed after O Sensei, as, as oh, she was his call. And so, depending on when they trained with him in his lifetime, they adapted or translated Aikido in different ways. Uh, and so, those, of, those people who trained with him later in life as he got older and got softer tended to follow what was called the Aikikai. And so that was by far, as even today, by far the most widely spread of all the Aikido styles. It's the most common style taught in Japan. Even in North America and Europe, it is by far the most commonly taught style. Uh, it has a lot of advantages. So uh, Aikikai has a lot of very fluid movements. Uh, and also I'll demonstrate some differences in a moment. The style that, that we take here in London is called Yoshikai. And so that was developed by the student Gozo Shiodo in 1955. Gozo Shioda uh, worked with O Sensei uh, when he was young and hard. And so he developed a more, uh, a much more rigid form of Aikido. The other issue with Yoshikan, and this is actually uh, applicable to a lot of martial arts as well, is that after World War II, there's this dissemination of martial arts uh, uh, across uh, Japanese culture and across uh, international uh, uh, student bodies as well. Uh, and so a few changes took place in martial arts in the kind of early 1950s. Uh, before this point, <coughs> colored belts, they didn't exist, right? There were so few students in the dojo, you knew exactly how well they could perform as there was no need for belts. Just after World War II, many of these styles started adapting what were black belts and white belts. And so essentially a way of distinguishing between senior students and new students. And then as you kind of get a little bit further and you kind of move it over to North America, we are very motivated by the idea of, I need to see that I'm progressing. And so you add a variety of colors in between white and black, right? Uh, and so they're not really necessary in the same way that when you're going through school and you go from grade one to grade two, you don't have to change your red shirt into an orange shirt, right? You just know intrinsically that now I'm in grade two. It's kind of the same thing. And so a lot of martial arts have been kind of adapted to this color, kind of color belt system. Aikikai still only uses white and black. And so you do rank up, you do train kind of the way you would do grade two to grade three to grade four. 
before, but you would still hold your white belt until you got to your black belt and then it would switch from there. We can go back a little bit. Uh, also, uh, Yoshin Kan tends to be more rigid, so because it was taught to large groups of students, they tended to kind of break things down a little bit more, right? So uh, Yoshin Kan will have a very kind of systemized, kind of a learning kind of dance, right? So you come over. For, uh, uh, let's say, the second block, so we'll do, uh, yeah, right? So they would say, there's, uh, I don't know about this here, maybe we can come back a little bit more. <laughs> so a wrist attack, right? If she's, um, so there's also pushes and pulls. We would come here and they would step it out here. Step one, step two, step three, and then you would go through with a throw or a lock, right? But Aikikai would not do it this way, they'd go like this, which is a better application of the technique, but much more difficult to learn for a beginner student, right? Uh, and so Yoshikai tends to break things down a little bit. Both of them have their strengths, right? Aikikai is really good because it develops flow and constant movement and circles and things like that. The problem with it is that students tend not to learn how to ground themselves, how to kind of maintain their kind of control and balance and things like that. Yoshin Kan is very good for beginning students to learn balance and control and maybe maintain the balance of your partner, but it's very difficult later on to kind of learn the flow and the application of the technique you have to have that flow. And so essentially, both of them start in a weak point, both of them start at a strength, a strong point, and the higher up you go, the closer they get together, and by the time you reach, I don't know, you've been trained for 20 or 30 years, there's really no difference between uh, I spent the first, I've been training now in, in Aikido for about six and a half years. I spent my first three in Aikikai, and then I had to switch over to Yoshin Ken. Uh, I guess the analogy I would give would be like switching from Portuguese to Spanish. A lot of similarities, but enough differences to make you feel uncomfortable, right? And so now I've been training the additional three years in Yoshin Ken, so I feel fairly comfortable with both. It was some challenges, but I kind of got used to it. There are some other styles. I don't want to downplay them, right? But I don't know very much about Shotokan Aikido. They added competition-based, uh, uh, well, rule-based competitions to, to Aikido. Most Aikido doesn't have competitions. Most martial arts do, right? You go to a competition, you compete against one another. Uh, as I said, the path of harmonious spirit isn't interested in competition. It's interested in the idea of finding kind of reasonable answers and reasonable without feeling like you're competing with somebody, right? And so there are a lot of movements, and there's a metaphor that gets used when your attacker attacks and they kind of push against you, where you turn and put yourself in their position to see how they see, right? And so there are a lot of metaphors that go along with Aikido in, in, in terms of the practical techniques. Uh, and then there's also a couple of other splinters in the 1970s, Awamaru and Key Society. Most of these were political. Uh, and so as, you know, Osensei dies and you've got a bunch of students who think they know what's really going on, they disagree about what's most important, and so more splinter. Uh, so all martial arts, as I said, have similarities between them. And so all martial arts teach self-defense, all teach discipline, all teach confidence and awareness. But most martial arts uh, also focus on what's, what I would call a nuclear response. And so the idea here is, is that someone gets in your face and so you kick them and break their ribs, right? Uh, or you know you break their hand, or you throw them to the ground and they kind of make sure that they never get up again. And most martial arts are based on that principle of taking care of your attacker as quickly as possible and making sure they're not going to get up again. Even in karate, which I took when I was younger, the idea was that your goal is to have the fight be one, one punch, one kick, that's it. And then the fight is over and you walk away. Uh, and so I want to show you this little video. This is a bit of a funny one. I don't know if you guys know this one. This is a, a, kind of a, a web comedy show called uh, Enter the Dojo. And I think it's a good application of showing how nuclear responses kind of actually work. And let's see how it's there. Some guy gets up in your face and starts to come around and always in the past. Now, secure the wrist. Then you have right the finger, right the wrist, right the elbow, right the jaw, <laughs> smash the groin, right the nose, right the knee, right the ribs, right the the body, knee drop the compass, kick the head, stop 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 the head, and exit out. And if you have anything in your pockets, you can use it, you can stab them where you're <laughs> well, no, if you don't have anything in your pockets and you drive over, no, 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 no. The whole thing seems a little makes sense that the guy gets in your face and so he basically just stay warm for a while. Hopefully. I'll tell you what, while he's in the hospital, you're home with your family. He's going to trial for attempted murder. <laughs> Better to be tried by 12 and carried by 6. What if he was asking for directions? They should have asked for across the street. 
<laughs> so, yeah, nuclear responses don't always work. Have you ever seen it in the dojo? It's a great little web series. They make fun of a lot of different parts as well. Uh, and so, uh, this is particularly important to, to us because we have young children, right? And so, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, for children to take Aikido, I think this is worthwhile because a schoolyard bully isn't necessarily aware of what they do. Should a schoolyard bully get a broken rib because they're bullying someone in the schoolyard, right? So, the idea here is, is to be able to defuse attacks without necessarily having to kill the person or cripple them for life. Uh, and I'm not, I don't want to kind of over exaggerate other martial arts saying that's what they do, but in terms of my kind of experience with other martial arts, there's a greater sense of violence associated with it. Uh, and so Aikido focuses on uh, several methods to be able to control an attacker's aggression without having to necessarily cripple or, or kill. Uh, so there are several metaphors that we use in Aikido to kind of demonstrate how this works. Uh, and so one way of doing this is to talk about a uh, car on an icy road. So we're all Canadians, and so we probably have at least some familiarity with this. And so you're going down an icy road, and you hit an icy patch, and so you try and turn and correct, right? But you turn a little too far. Right? So you're like, okay, I'll fix this and I'll turn it this way, and you turn a little too far, you turn it back this way, and then your car spins out and off you go off the road. And so Aikido works the same way in terms of my goal is to make her overcorrect. Uh, so let's say uh, just a showman ski, right? And so if my first movement is as she comes in, I want to take her just past her balance point, right? And what's her first movement going to be? She wants to correct that movement, right? And so as she goes back, I go back with her. And then down she goes. <laughs> and so that is the kind of the principal application of how Aikido works partially. The other way of thinking about it is imagine uh, you got a big steel door in front of you. There's no window, you don't know what's on the other side, so you're going forward. You know you've got to give this steel door a real push. And just as you're about to push the steel door, there's someone on the other side and they open it. And so you're going here, and then boom, out you go, right? Or in Aikido, the application would be. I go towards the steel door and boom, oh no! And then we're clear, right? And so all of this is about principled movement and application. And that application would be, like I said, very difficult to learn. I would say in comparison with other martial arts, I don't know, this is going to take me years to really learn to apply. It's obviously a lot more difficult to control someone than just to break their ribs or break their knee or something along those lines. Uh, so part of Aikido's effectiveness revolves around the idea that you want to take someone past their balance point. That is very simple to do. So if you come over again. Uh, at the very least, what I would say in terms of demonstration is, is this. Uh, anybody been in a situation where, I don't know, you're hanging around a two-year-old, and so you crouch down, and you're like, come here, come here, and they bowl at you so fast, they knock you over, right? It's not difficult to take someone's balance. A two-year-old can take your balance, right? And so, uh, me? We are, because we only have two legs, we, have, we are strong in some areas and not so strong in others. And so pushing forward, you can adapt for this. Push, 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 push. That's pretty good, right? Uh, pushing back, yeah, she's pretty good there. Side to hot side, she's probably not too bad either. It's going to be a little bit worse, right? And so on the cardinal direction points, she'll have a fair amount of strength. Where she's not going to be stronger on the angles. Two fingers. <laughs> Here. And so part of this is about overcorrection, part of it is about what angles you take on these situations. Uh, so, uh, Shomansky. As I speed through here, I don't want to hit the cardinal directions, I want to hit the angles, because those are what we're going to take her off balance. We do have strikes in Aikido. And then we can start a throw here. So there are two roles that play out in Aikido. One we call um, shite and the other one we call uh, uke, right? Uh, and so initially everybody learns this with kind of a basic partner. If you've taken martial arts at all, much of this is like kata, except that it's always partnered kata. So you never do anything on, on your own. You learn the dance, you learn the movements, and you're learning two things simultaneously. And so when you're performing the technique, you're learning how to throw someone, how to control someone, how to balance or take their balance and kind of diffuse the threat. When you're having it done to you, you're learning how to safely manage a throw, right? And so both roles are, are equally important. A uh, number of techniques are broken down into a specific number of movements to be easier to learn, as I said, in the ocean kind. So movements rather than nice smooth movements where I might block and pin someone are done more one, two, three. They might even count out the class two, four, five, and then down we go. Uh, and so like I said, the person doing the technique 
depending on the style of Aikido you're looking at. It's sometimes called Tore, sometimes called Nage. In our club, they call them Shite, that's specifically from Yoshi Ken. The person who receives the technique is called Uke, the receiver of the, of the technique. And so there are hundreds of techniques that are taught through uh, what we call flight. And so you show up one day and they don't teach you one technique, they'll teach you a dozen techniques. And you'll walk away from your first class and you'll be like, I don't remember any of them. They're like, that's okay, we're going to teach you another dozen next day. And you're like, I don't remember any of those. And then eventually, over time, you kind of realize that all of these techniques are very similar to one another. They have very similar principles. Uh, and so we have attacks that over We practice from all kinds of attacks. So uh, just to kind of go through them in Japanese, we have katakamochi, a wrist grasp, hijimochi, an elbow grasp. Katamochi, shoulder grasp. Munimochi, center grasp. Uh, we've also got Ryotamochi, double hand grasp. We've got strikes. Shoman ski, that can be to the stomach, to the chest, to the head. We've got shomenuchis that come over top. Imagine uh, a beer bottle. A beer bottle here too, Yokomenuchi. We have Yoshiro, Ryotamochi, Ayamochi. So there's a lot of different examples, and so there are 20, 30 techniques, all from different attacks. On top of that, we also teach them from different energy levels, right? So maybe someone grabs your wrist, wrist, and they're pulling you in for a punch. So you have to be able to do a wrist grasp that's also pulling. Maybe it's just static. Maybe they're trying to control you. Maybe they're trying to push you back into a wall. And so you have to deal with also not only different attacks, but different energy directions as well. So it's hard to learn. It's really hard to learn, and you have to kind of be able to kind of adapt and go along. And so after years of being able to kind of practice these paired kata, you learn how similar all of the techniques are. You learn how to flow. Uh, I always describe it as a language, right? So every technique is like a sentence, right? Maybe the subject of the sentence changes, right? Maybe the subject of the sentence is an overhand attack. Maybe it's a side attack. And then as I kind of start the sentence, I kind of continue through and finish my sentence, and then you end up on the ground, right? <laughs> ideally, ideally. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that one of the people that we train with is a university professor in math at Western, at Western University, and he describes it as math. All he looks at is the geometry, the angles, the positions, where, where things get positioned. And I think that's really interesting. And so ultimately, you have a panda. <laughs> Everybody saw my panda roll earlier? And so uh, both roles are really important. Most people, when they start, see the role of Uke as the victim. Like, now it's my turn just to have my ass down. And that's not really what it's about, because being the Uke is just as important as, as being Shite. Shite learns to do techniques of control, not to apply too much force, but just enough force. Just enough to take the balance, not too much. Obviously, that takes years and years to learn. Uke learns to fall, that's Ukemi, right? So not just falling, but controlled falling. Be able to kind of control your own situation. And the, and the principle that always gets applied here is that Uke always has control of their own falls. You determine how you're actually going to fall. It doesn't matter how they throw you. And so Aikido is a very intimate art. There's a lot of touching, there's a lot of closeness. A lot of the movements don't work if there are gaps between big spaces. You have to be right on top of them, very, very close to one another. And so it's just it's like there's constant hugging going on, right? And so it's a very, very intimate art. And until you can develop really good ukemi, you can't really understand what the art is because the big senseis, they won't throw you hard until they know you can take a good throw, right? So you get these kind of half techniques. They will get ready to throw you. Yeah. One more. Uh, we'll do another uh, uh, And so we have what was called a hitting elbow. In terms of Aiki, let's turn a little bit, right? In terms of uh, Aiki Jiu Jitsu, break, right? In terms of Aikido, I can take the shoulder instead, and then off we go. Right? Uh, and so until you can learn that, a sensei will just stop and say, okay, just let yourself fall. Right? So a lot of it appears fake at first because you have to learn to be able to take a throw before they'll actually throw you because they don't want to hurt you either. So really what I want to talk about today is this idea of living Aikido. I mean, it's one thing to talk about principles and how Aikido works uh, and how you take balance and things along those lines. But, but, but living Aikido requires you to understand that what you do in the dojo and what you do on the mat is the same thing that you do in everyday life. And so how do you deal with confrontation? If your boss is, let's say, getting up in your face, do you confront back or do you try to redirect the energy, take it in another direction and create flow? And that's ultimately what Aikido is trying to do. Are there practical applications to Aikido? Of course there are. Of course there are. 
This, of course, depends on which dojo you go to. Of course, with any martial art, there are dojos that just want to make you feel good, and so if someone comes to attack you, they're like, oh no, I fell down, you got me. That depends on where you are, right? And so I would argue that every martial art has weaknesses. Every martial art has weaknesses. Aikido is no different than any of the other. Right now, I guess the conventional wisdom is that the one martial art that doesn't have weaknesses is MMA, <laughs> which is also a ridiculous lie, because MMA doesn't work unless you're in a constructive Construct, sorry, constrained space with only one other opponent where there are certain moves you're not allowed to use. Now imagine you're out on the street and you have multiple opponents and one of them has a knife. Right? This is not the truth. It's an illusion that we kind of create. And so the idea here is it's not that martial arts can be weak, but there are certain people that are weak in terms of their martial arts training. And so nuclear responses are obviously much easier to apply. Think about how many knife attacks have occurred in London this year. Right, how many have we got? Six or seven so far in the year? Yeah. And, and why is that? Part of this is how people respond to it. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> Knife attacks, uh, shoulder and ski, are probably going to happen this way with no training. <laughs> you back away, you get stabbed, right? The application here for Aikido is, is that we always enter, we always move forward, right? And that's true of, of any martial art. The idea here also is that I'd rather get stabbed once, superficially, than get stabbed 40 times as I back away. Backing away doesn't work. Now I have control, right? She's past her balance point. Her knife is in a situation where she can't get me. Application. And so ultimately, the idea here is, is that how do you deal with confrontation? Do you enter? Do you back away? Do you hit, hit things head on? You might even notice that on that initial movement when Mel attacking with a knife, I don't head straight in. The angles, right? These four angles that we're dealing with. I angle off just past her, but I'm tight, and then I start to turn and apply a technique. Ultimately as well, I mean, this is also true of most martial arts, posture is everything, right? People who walk down the street like this get victimized, right? These are the people that bullies look at and say, I'm going to mug them. People who have correct posture and stand up straight and are aware of their environment do not get victimized, right? And that's really important in terms of also application of IQ. So outside of self-defense, there are all kinds of applications that we learn in Aikido. One of the things that we talk about is what's called fall down seven, get up eight. You might be wondering why we're not using 10 here. Cardinal directions, four, eight. Eight movements, right? Uh, and so the notion here is, is that if you get knocked down, you can take this physically or you can think about this metaphorically as well. Everybody has adversity in their life, right? How do you take that adversity? The truth is all of us are more often going to be okay than we are going to be shit. More often than not, we're going to have to deal with adversity. We're, we're on the receiving end of something bad. How do you deal with that? And so the notion of fall down seven, get up eight, gets applied in the dojo. You get knocked down and in an average class, you'll fall down hundreds of times. What do you do? You're just going to stay down there on the mat or are you going to get back up? And this has a psychological effect on, you, on your entire life, is that you start to apply this in terms of how you look at the world. If I'm, going to get fall, if I'm going to fall down, if my house burns down, if someone in my family gets cancer, how do I deal with that? Am I going to just lie down on the mat and just let it happen or am I going to get back up again? And so that psychological application is really important. Learning to blend. Learning to understand that you don't have to be confrontational to achieve ends, right? Winter is coming. How do you fall? <laughs> right? This is practical, right? You're going to slip on the ice this year. How are you going to fall? Well, I'll tell you how most people fall. They stick their hand out and break their wrist. They don't stick their hand out or they break their elbow. I'm not going to fall on the ice. And if I do, I'm going to fall like this. Right? <laughs> That's just practicality. Inside of martial arts, I'm never worried about falling down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mel's going to talk a little bit more about weapons and, and women in martial arts. Alright, so um, Aikido is also based on samurai sword techniques. All of our hand to hand techniques that we do can be traced back to a samurai with a sword. So um, our sword is called, our wooden sword is called a Vulcan. Looks like this. Uh, Every Tuesday night, so tonight at 8 o'clock, I will be um, with the, the weapons teacher at Aikido and uh, learning about the sword. Now, is it practical? Will I 
be walking down the streets of London and get attacked by a, somebody wielding a sword? Probably not, right? But it is super fun. It is super, super fun to do. Um, and we do a lot of, of techniques with the sword. I can uh, show you in a moment. Um, this is one of our sensei, our, our, our uh, weapon sensei that, uh, I'm pretty positive that's actually my sword. I got it off of YouTube or something, so I think that's me. Um, so we do uh, techniques where we try to get the sword from the other person, or we do techniques where we just try to um, evade, get out of the way of the sword of the other person. Our cardinal directions, our eight cardinal directions that Ron and you on the board here are very important with sword work as well. Um, we also have a, a joke. Uh, it's also a lot of fun. We try to stab people with it, and we block, and we hit people with it. Uh, if somebody ever came at you with a stick or hockey stick or something, <laughs> um, it's a little bit more practical. That might happen for a sword. <laughs> and so uh, we learn techniques all to do with balance and redirecting energy. If somebody's grabbing this from me, I let them take it, and then I, I um, come and grab it. Okay. <laughs> so he grabs it and he's pulling it. I'm not going to pull back, right? Now we're fighting. But if he grabs it and I let him have it, and then I can break his balance. I don't want another guy. Back. To <laughs> but um, we can we can learn how to do stuff like that as well. It's a lot of fun. We have a uh, a tonto, our knife. Um, I think it's the most practical. As Brian said, lots of knife attacks. We have a lot of fun with this one. We um, kind of roll like gangster on the street, so we're like, ah, like you know, trying to stab people and stuff. Um, it's kind of empowering to know that I can get out of the way of this. Like I'm, I'm probably gonna get cut or something, but I'm not going to die this death where I'm, I'm cowering away, right? So it's, I don't know. I have a lot of fun with the weapon, but I'll show you more if you have time. So. I started Aikido in my 40s. That's crazy, right? Because <laughs> you see all these pictures of people getting thrown in the air and whatnot. Um, you really don't have to be young and fit and in spectacular shape to think Aikido. I think that's what draws a lot of people to it as well. Because you don't need to muscle your way through all these techniques, right? We've got um, some very, very highly ranked senseis. Brian got to drink with this guy. At a bar. Yeah, he's from British Columbia. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. Sensei Mustard. And uh, you can see his big beer belly there. He is incredible at Aikido. He's not like, the most physically fit person, right? Um, I got to meet uh, Shihan. Shihan means uh, like a teacher of the sensei. He's like the master. I got to meet Shihan uh, Hayei. And he is like a really soft spoken grandfather man, right? <laughs> hold you down his finger. It's amazing. Um, and O Sensei was very old. Um, and still so if you're in I don't know if you ever think that like, oh it's not in good enough shape to take that keto or I'm too old or something. It's not true. You should give it a try. It's uh I don't know. <laughs> um, I imagine any martial art for a woman would be empowering, right? You can take control of a situation. Uh, I find Aikido fun. I find it uh, relaxes me in tense situations. I know I can take care of myself, or at least try to take care of myself if somebody ever attacks me. Um, what I find most interesting is that it doesn't matter that I'm a girl, when I'm on the mat at Aikido. What matters is that my belt is green, a little stripe on it, <laughs> and uh, the people I'm standing across, who I try to all make sure is a black belt, if you ever take Aikido with me, run of the black belts because uh, they'll train you really well, are actually trying to hit me. It doesn't matter that I'm a girl. They just care what rank I am, how fast or how hard a throw I can take, depending on uh, the color of my belt. And so it's actually really free to, it's one of the few situations in my life where it doesn't matter that I'm a girl. And so it's uh, very, very fun that way. Um, 
So our kids are in Aikido, as Brian was saying. Uh, so we kind of covered this a little bit, but it's important that idea that you don't want your kid to think that they have to like kick the crap out of somebody, right? Um, yeah, sure, there's somebody bullying them or something, but they can deal with the situation and not have to uh, break the kid's arm or something, right? And so I like that idea. I also like the idea that there's no competitions. I wrote that somewhere. There's no tournaments. And so my son doesn't like gym class. Uh, tells me he doesn't like the sports in gym class, but really likes Aikido. Um, and I think that's why there's not that sense of competition for him. He's just, as people who practice Aikido, we're kind of in competition with ourselves, right? We want to do the ourselves, we want to do the best that we can do. And uh, we've got um, this idea in the, in the dojo where somebody's struggling, you want to actually help them out. You want to help them to learn. You want to teach them so that they can get better. You know, it's not a situation where I'm not going to tell them my kind of secret move because there's a tournament next week and I want to win, right? No, that's not the way uh, Aikido works. You see somebody struggling. You remember struggling yourself with that exact same technique and you want to help them through it, right? So it's more of a family. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, nope. So that idea about fall down seven, get up eight, it actually really <laughs> resonates with me off the mats. Um, I mean, you can imagine, I, Brian and I, we go to Aikido three times a week each. Uh, about an hour, sometimes they're two hour classes. So after being thrown down <laughs> and getting up and attacking, thrown down, getting up and attacking, thrown for two hours at a time, uh, it kind of gets in your head, right? That it doesn't matter what life throws at you, you can get up from it and you can just keep going. And so I find that um, since I started Aikido two and a half years ago, that uh, um, I can see that in myself, that attitude uh, changing where my pile of marking is not going to kill me. Right? <laughs> it might, but I'm going to get back up from it. My kids are like, mommy, 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 24-7, and it's not going to wear me down. I can get back up from that. Um, Brian and I took the kids to the Great Wolf Lodge. I don't know if anybody's been there, but you climb thousands of steps through water slides, right? And we just awesome. we counted them. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of several days, we kind of steps and steps. And those steps did not get us down. <laughs> and there were other parents there that were like, oh my god, it's slide till we die, you know? And we're like, run up the steps, right? <laughs> um, and so, it's, and it's Aikido, it's that idea of fall down seven, and get up eight that uh, resonates with me. We also have a rule in our house that if you want to go to Aikido class, you go to Aikido class. And if you don't want to go to Aikido class, you definitely go to Aikido class. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Um, and so I'm not sure if I'll ever actually have to use my Aikido in self-defense. Um, if I will, if I do, if it ever comes up, then I think I'll be ready. I hope I'll be ready. But um, it's all the other aspects of Aikido that affect my life that uh, make me love it so much. And this idea of uh, path of spirit and harmony um, is really how I want to live my life, right? I want to be able to diffuse the negative energy. I want to be able to redirect it. I don't want to let it get me down. I don't want to be on the mat and just lie there. I want to get back up and keep fighting, right? And so, I feel it does that. I feel it helps that out. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Um, what age were your kids when they started? Like how young? Six. Yeah, there's a minimum age of six to join. They take one kid to be a little older or mature enough to be able to kind of deal with it. Yeah. And uh, so Kira, she's my do our daughter, she's five. She is amazed, she's mesmerized by one of the female senseis, uh, Sensei Perez. <laughs> she's, um, uh, I wish I like, right? Because there are very highly ranked women in Aikido. It doesn't matter, as I said. Um, I can show you that uh, back a couple of slides. This is like a guy getting thrown, and this is a girl getting thrown. It's the exact same technique. There's, it's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter that you're a girl. It doesn't matter that you're a guy. What matters is the rank that you're at, the experience you have. So, uh, yeah. Are there questions? Anybody want to try and get right with the knife? This one? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs>